Hi, everybody. My name is Eugene Turk. I'm the VP of Business Development at Align, and I want to welcome you to our monthly coach webinar for May 2023. Hope everybody's doing well, and thank you so much for joining us today. This morning, um, we are thrilled to have Jim Crisafuli with a presentation on visionary leadership, how to develop, communicate, and achieve your business vision. For those of you who may not be familiar with Jim, he is a business coach and the owner of Crisafuli Business Coaching Incorporated. In addition to offering his own coaching programs, Jim is a certified e-myth coach and certified in the six discipline strategy execution program. Prior to establishing his own coaching practice, Jim owned multiple businesses in the retail and payroll services spaces, while at the same time also being an investor and minority owner stakeholder in a tech startup company as well. He earned both his bachelor's degree and an MBA from Bryant University with a focus on management. He has taught entrepreneurship at Bryant, his alma mater, and is a regular presenter of seminars and workshops uh, on a variety of business topics for various business associations and private business organizations. So we are honored to have Jim present for us this month. Uh, as always, just one administrative matter. We want this to be as educational and as informational as possible for all of you. So please feel free to pose any questions that you may have using the chat feature, and we will hold those questions and redirect them to Jim at the conclusion of his presentation. So again, thank you all for attending this Align Coach webinar, and I will now turn the microphone over to Jim. Well, thank you very much. That was a very, um, very nice uh, introduction that kind of brought back um, uh, some good memories of um, where I've uh, where I started and and uh, where I am now, um, and it's really a, a great pleasure to be uh, here today and uh, have an opportunity to speak about vision. Um, I'm going to share my uh, desktop and G uh, can you let me know if that you're seeing uh, seeing this? Yes, we are. Okay, perfect. Um, so just a real quick uh, backstory. Um, Eugene and I spoke about this uh, presentation, and I look back at many of the presentations that Align has offered, and uh, ironically, I didn't see, uh, I couldn't put my finger right away on vision, and that kind of surprised me a little bit, seeing that vision is such a um, uh, important aspect of developing a business strategy uh, in the context of strategic planning. Um, uh, vision is, uh, I would say, one of the the three legs, uh, you know, um, uh, holding up that uh, that uh, strategy table. Uh, we've got mission, we've got values, and we've got vision. So this seemed to be uh, a real good fit for um, what Align uh, is doing, and of course, it's a obviously a pretty high level um, uh, topic uh, for all business owners. So I would like to, you know, uh, use the context of. Uh, vision, um, uh, not knowing um, who's out there that has one um, for their company, their organization. Uh, so it could be a, um, um, you know, very helpful to support a organization in, in developing a new one. It could also be uh, helpful for renewing or redoing uh, an existing uh, vision uh, statement that you have. So what we're really, what I'm really trying to accomplish uh, today is, uh, you know, certainly some nuts and bolts uh, of how to get started um, with developing a vision for your organization, uh, and, and equally uh, important, how do you communicate that uh, to your, um, you know, to your team and your stakeholders uh, related to your organization. So those are the those are the uh, places that I definitely want to uh, touch on uh, today, um, and of course. I welcome uh, I welcome your questions uh, afterward. Um, that would probably be helpful for uh, everyone here. So let me get started with um, you know the what I call um, how we define define a vision. Uh, actually, after I did these slides uh, several weeks ago, I didn't realize I had the word uh, align in there. So that was no pun intended there on that second sentence. But you know 
this uh, vision that I want to share my thoughts on today, um, really the outcome or the deliverable uh, for the folks that I've worked with over the years is to come up with a vision statement that can be communicated uh, to um, uh, to your team primarily, uh, and of course some some other stakeholders as well. Um, and it's really and I, and and you'll see in one of the um, upcoming slides that oftentimes when I talk to or speak with business owners and managers, uh, this confusion between mission and vision. So uh, to clarify, this is really all about you know what your business will look like, what it will have, what it'll be uh, in the future. And uh, your vision should align with the business goals uh, and, and your company's organization, uh, I'm sorry, aspirations. Um, it's I'm using the word formal, but yes, there is some you know formality to it so that you can be very clear um, as a leader in your organization on how important this is. Um, many of you have heard the uh, you know expressions like everyone rowing in the same direction, right? Um, so it's important as a leader uh, in your organization uh, to let everyone know um, where the company is going and how you're going to get there. Uh, so that's uh, vision uh, defined. And then I have uh, purpose, which I've kind of already touched on. Uh, it's really um, you know, uh, important for any organization uh, to have goals, to know where they're headed. Um, not only have a uh, not only have a target to aim at, but more importantly, a bullseye uh, on that target. And in one of the uh, slides as well, um, in a, in a bit, I'll be speaking to how do we measure that? How do we track our progress uh, along the way towards our vision? Um, and as Eugene had mentioned, you know this is very related to visionary leadership, uh, and of course, this leadership. Um, is your responsibility as an owner, as a manager, as a leader in your organization for it to be inspirational uh, and aspirational. Uh, and it should challenge your employees, challenge your team. Um, and you as the leader, and I'll, and I'll touch on this later, really need to uh, communicate this well uh, to your team. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've, uh, I've come up um, against uh, the confusion uh, when when a business owner or a manager or a leader uh, speaks to me about their vision as they're speaking. Um, the light bulb is going on in my head uh, that all I'm hearing is them talk about their mission. And this is a good little uh, slide. Uh, I actually uh, shared this recently up on, um, on uh, LinkedIn as a post uh, on the difference between mission and vision. And certainly you can you know, do an internet search for more because it's, you know, it's a it's a pretty interesting um, uh, topic uh, and it's obviously something that needs clarification. Uh, so this is a, this is a real uh, easy one to follow. Um, I use I often will say a mission statement is your statement of purpose. Um, it's another another way of referring to the mission. Uh, it's why you exist, why you're here, uh, and what we're doing today. Uh, and the vision is really all about the future. This seems to be, um, you know, fairly uh, simple now that you see it, um, but surprisingly, uh, it's very, very uh, common to confuse the two. And even when a business owner or a leader is is developing their vision statement, they still tend to be more about current purpose, uh, and and not necessarily speak to. Um, you know, where they want to be in the future and what they want to be and what they want to have. Uh, here's another, um, you know, reiteration of the, you know, what I call the components, the elements of a business strategy. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. This is very traditional, uh, very business schoolish um, on what is a, what defines a business strategy. Um, you know, again, the, today's um, webinar is not about mission or values. Uh, it is about vision, but you can you can see in this visual how they all tie together to equal um, and be your business strategy. Uh, so it's very important that when you are about to write, renew, redo your vision, that you take into account um, 
your organization's mission and values um, as you're as you're developing it. There should be some alignment um, between your values and your mission when you're writing your vision statement. Um, so I think this was a good um, uh, topic to bring in uh, on who develops it. Um, this is a uh, audience that obviously can include a very small um, micro mini business, uh, a business with just a couple of people, which is fine. Uh, those are those are organizations that I'm familiar with, and I believe uh, strongly that a vision statement is uh, relevant in a three-person company or a 300-person company or a 300,000-person company. So in a small, mini, um, uh, closely held organization, it's usually going to be the business owner that's going to create that vision. Um, and, and, and sometimes that's got some challenges that they're not uh, creating a, a personal vision statement, right? Uh, we want to make sure it's all about the company, where the company is going to go, uh, what it's going to achieve, what does it look like, um, and not to be confused with what I want, what I want my life to look like. So this is really about the company, and that'll be more of a challenge with a uh, independent uh, business owner versus maybe a little bit larger organization. And uh, large doesn't have to be, you know, huge. Uh, a little bit larger organization might be 15, 20 people or more that might have a leadership team, um, maybe uh, three to five um, key uh, managers that are um, on the leadership team. So it's very common as well for the leadership team uh, through some exercises uh, that they would develop the vision as an organization, um, you know, driven by the uh, by the leadership team. The um, this this uh, slide about uh, present versus future actually kind of ties in a little bit with the uh, mission mission and um, uh, uh, vision confusion, um, but they're not not necessarily related. But I just bring that point that. Um, some folks do tend to um, muddle, you know, uh, the the present tense and the future tense. And my opinion would be there's no right or wrong. Um, however, I just like to bring this up to be conscious of it, that when you're thinking about uh, developing a vision statement, that you're actually thinking of intentionally about Am I speaking in the present tense about my future? Meaning um, uh, it's 2023, it's uh, May of 2023, uh, and this is where we want to be. Uh, so all of the uh, kind of vernacular is gonna be, we shall, we will, we want to, uh, all of those kinds of um, uh, verbiage. Uh, whereas if you're speaking in the future tense, it's more about um, speaking in the tense of 2027, say, for example, or 2028, five years from now, five years from now. Uh, so you're speaking about um, ABC company and you're speaking about it like it's 2028. ABC company is a uh, $10 million organization um, that is uh, not, you know, is serving uh, X, communities at X locations, uh, developing, you know, whatever. So you're, you're, you're writing uh, like it is 2028. So again, no, I don't feel that there's any right or wrong. Um, I just feel like uh, it's good to be uh, conscious of what tense uh, you write this in. Uh, and also time frame. Uh, I think various uh, thought leaders um, years ago when I when I was more active in strategic planning uh, and the uh, six disciplines uh, organization where I did some strategic planning, um, they advocated for a 10 year uh, vision. Um, I think more common uh, today is uh, three to five years. So I think you want to think about what is your line of sight. Um, and I would probably advocate for a shorter period, maybe even three years. Um, and then as you work through some type of uh, planning process, uh, you can actually drill down 
uh, into one-year plans. Um, but I do want to make note that I think a 10-year vision uh, is also good in some sense uh, for the expression that maybe many of you are familiar with, uh, developing your BHAG, uh, big, hairy, audacious goals. Uh, so you certainly could have um, a 10-year, you know, uh, mount, you know what what the mountaintop would look like in a perfect world um, ten years from now, um, and it's not such a bad concept to think that way. But I, in in the in the work I've done with organizations over the years, which has been primarily small to mid sized uh, organizations, I would normally advocate for a three to year, uh, three to five year. So again, no right or wrong, but I think that as you begin to develop uh, the process of a vision statement, that that's something that up front you want to be thinking about. Am I thinking um, uh, about developing this, you know, for 2026 or 2028? Am I going to use the present tense or the future tense? Hope that's helpful to everyone. This balanced approach, you know, uh, to some degree, you know, I'm using the word balanced, uh, that ties into a couple of uh, smart guys uh, from Harvard that wrote the, uh, you know, balanced scorecard. So it kind of falls in that line of thinking that um, uh, we want balance in the vision statement. Um, we don't want just a vision statement that speaks to financials. Uh, many of the um, first drafts of the uh, vision statements that I see are pretty much um, we're going to be a $10 million company in 2027. Um, right now, that organization might be doing $2 million a year in revenue, and the vision is that we get to $10 million. Um, in my opinion, that's not enough. Uh, that's nowhere near... Um, uh, in my opinion, the the kind of approach um, and context that you'd want to uh, communicate um, about your vision. So as you look through this, you see, uh, you know, the the four, uh, what, what I would call the uh, assets of an organization, financial assets, customer assets, um, learning and growth assets, internal processes. Um, and in my in my uh, opinion, I think that all four of these should be addressed uh, in a vision statement. And on the left side of the slide, uh, I, it's kind of intentional uh, the way that this is um, uh, written. It's it's from the approach of uh, this would be this would be from the bottom uh, to the top, um, as opposed to the top to the bottom. And what I mean by that is. If you follow this order and you really are able to accomplish uh, innovation in your internal process, um, and that might be in how you write your systems, how you implement your systems, what kind of technologies you're using, what kind of cutting edge um, uh, software, or what kind of cutting edge customer you know, service programs are you developing uh, that drive uh, employee performance um, to develop or to end up with a high quality product or service. This would lead into the next stage um, when you've got this innovation of internal processes in place. That is a segue into investing into the resources um, of your people asset. Uh, you know, uh, clearly uh, that is something that's missing, in my opinion, in a lot of vision statements, um, the lack of addressing what a organization has um, uh, uh, regarding a vision for their um, most important asset, which is their human resources. Uh, so, you know, there may be, uh, uh, you know, just uh, kind of paraphrasing here, something like, you know, uh, our people are highly trained, um, have a sense of ownership uh, without equity in our organization because of the values that we live every day, Um so you're you're going on talking about what an absolute perfect and ideal uh, vision of your human resource asset would be, um, and that segues into uh, 
if you've got the internal processes in place, um, if you've got the people asset in place, then that is going to naturally uh, lead into a um, fantastic customer experience. Um, whether it's a product or service uh, based business, um, the, uh, the development and the achievement of uh, the first two elements of this uh, vision statement are going to um, really ensure you know, the delivery uh, of your brand promise and uh, an incredible uh, customer experience. So if all three of those things happen, uh, then it's going to, uh, by, by, uh, by, you know, uh, you know, naturally, you know, have a, a huge impact on achieving your financial goals. So one way of reading it is kind of in this order that if you do this and this and this, it will, it will lead to achieving the financial goals. And you could reverse this. You could have your financial goals at the top and say that, you know, we're going to achieve these financial goals uh, by, you know, delivering on this customer experience. And we're going to deliver on this customer experience because we've invested in our uh, human resources. And we've got uh, great human resource uh, assets in this organization because we've uh, paid attention and uh, spent a lot of time on uh, continuous improvement and innovation. So I know this is uh, kind of a, a, a longer story uh, about this uh, particular subject, um, but my real hope uh, for anyone, any organization that's developing a vision statement is that they uh, think about this balanced approach, that they they, they really uh, speak to or address their vision for their people, their vision for their client customer experience, uh, their vision for innovation uh, operationally. Uh, it could also be, you know, um, uh, you could also address community um, engagement. Uh, all of those things, in addition to uh, financial, is kind of what I'm trying to emphasize. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to go too much further on this, but you can. I hope you can tell that this is uh, I'm a little bit passionate about um, the balanced uh, approach to a vision statement. Uh, moving over to uh, shifting gears here for a moment, um, a fellow that I'm sure many of you recognize, Jack Welch. Um, uh, you know, this is really to be a segue into reminding uh, of, you know, really who in the organization or what position in the organization really owns this. And of course, this would be the CEO, man, I'm sorry, president, leader, founder, uh, whatever title, um, the guy at the top of the totem pole uh, is really uh, the one responsible, you know, for, um, you know, sharing this, communicating this developing a plan so that the vision statement, you know, doesn't uh, fall through the cracks, uh, so to speak. Uh, so it's, it's really important that the leader uh, of any organization is very mindful of this, uh, develops their own internal uh, system and plan to be able to share uh, the vision, the organization's vision, uh, their passion about it, um, and uh, really engage uh, everyone in the organization. Uh, that's really, again, the, the uh, responsibility of, of leadership. Uh, and, I, and, and I'm gonna address this a little bit more um, in a moment. Uh, this is really more of a, um, you, know, uh, you know, the context again about developing the vision after you've kind of got all the uh, elements of, uh, of the balanced approach. Uh, how are you going to how are you going to address you know your financial goals how are you going to address um, the vision that you have for your people the vision that you have for your customer experience um, you've got kind of it all in 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 place now um, how do you communicate that uh, and, and I'll speak to that again uh, momentarily as well um, but these are the kinds of um, examples that I've seen uh, that work very well uh, very traditional would be a narrative uh, format, um, obviously a Word or a PDF document that is pretty uh, traditional and straightforward and addresses uh, the vision of the organization. Uh, clearly, again, in a present tense or a past, I'm sorry, present or future tense, um, what time frame? Uh, so it's very uh, clear that we're talking about, or we understand this to be you know, 2028 uh, or whatever year. Um, 
And the reason I put the management version and the team version uh, is because some of the experience I've had with uh, organizations doing this, um, they're virtually about the same. And really the only difference and the reason I bring this uh, to your attention is that the, um, the management version, especially in a small closely held company that is gonna include financial goals in their vision, tends to be a little, uh, uh, want to hold that closer to the vest than maybe a leadership team that's more privy to um, the organization's uh, financials. Um, so some oftentimes in a very small, closely held uh, organization, um, the business owners you know, may not want to share um, top line revenue. They may not want to share gross profit margins, net income, those kind of things. However, they would really like them uh, to be uh, included in their vision, but not necessarily shared with everyone on the team. So that's really the difference between the two versions. Uh, oftentimes the team version uh, may address financials, but maybe not in the um, uh, you know exact dollars, but more in percentages. So instead of, instead of, um, stating that you want to be a $10 million company and you're two today, uh, the team version might have that the organization is going to grow top line revenue 30% each year over the next few years. So it's just kind of a way of being a little bit more confidential if the uh, owners want it that way. Don't see that too often, you know, with a leadership team. Um, so, uh, you know, the next uh, point would be a format of internal versus ex external um, uh, vision statement. Um, backing up for a moment uh, to company values, just, you know, that that is one component of the business strategy that is really um, most often communicated internally and externally. I would say the vision, not so much. Uh, clearly, 100% uh, uh, internal and uh, a little bit less on the external side. So um, if you are going to communicate it on the external side, then typically it's going to be a much shorter um, version, so to speak, um, on your website, on your marketing collateral. If you want to speak to the vision that your organization has, um, typically it might not be a long narrative that addresses those balanced um, elements. Uh, that I spoke to earlier might be, a, again, a, a very succinct uh, few sentences or a short paragraph uh, if you want to share that vision uh, externally. Um, the reason I put infographics is I've actually seen a lot of folks, um, uh, creative folks, that have come up with a, a vision statement that is um, their style uh, is to, you know, um, communicate that through an infographic and it's very uh very effective uh very effective um so that's another option um to do it in that type of a format and then visual aids uh again the reason i bring that up is uh as i'll as i'll speak to maybe again uh briefly uh later on is how do you uh communicate um the values um internally and externally and there's some challenges with the visual and verbal, uh, I'm sorry, with the verbal communication. Oftentimes that is what does fall through the cracks, uh, that the leader or the business owner is not um, connecting the dots with daily activity uh, to the vision. Uh, and one way to kind of uh, support uh, keeping the vision alive and well is using some visual aids. And again, those could, those could typically be an infographic. It could be the vision, um, you know, posted on a you know frame in every office in the in the um, building, in the vehicles or whatever. So uh, I think it's important to, you know, think about what type of format you know works best uh, for your organization. Um, certainly, one of the um, key aspects of any of the um, elements of a business strategy <clears throat> is how are you measuring? And in uh, in the work that I've uh, done with many business owners, 
you know, having the vision statement, uh, quite frankly, uh, I would say is almost the easy part. Uh, uh, executing on it and measuring it is more of the uh, of the challenge. So many folks that I work with, I, I try to have them be conscious when they're uh, developing their vision, especially if they're using these four elements, is having them be conscious of how will we measure this? Maybe including uh, indicators or after the vision is, is written, go back and look and say, are there really some pieces that I can pull out of here? Are there indicators that I can pull out of here and put on a, on a type of uh, measurement? Um, because clearly the one huge way, obviously, to achieve your vision is to have a um, uh, some type of methodology that you're gonna be able to uh, use, whether it's software or a blackboard with chalk, um, uh, keeping track of where you are in a timeline on that vision um, is critical. Um, so here is a um, kind of a little, uh, to do a uh, little takeaway, um, you know, from our webinar today on how you can really get started. Uh, whether you, again, if you don't have one, this is starting from uh, from scratch. If you do have one and you want to renew it or redo it, um, these are some things that you could consider. Uh, usually, in a very traditional strategic planning process, um, one of the kind of um, Preambles would be to do some surveying. Uh, if your company has not done any surveying, um, uh, it would be something to think about, uh, something co to consider doing, because the feedback uh, from those surveys are great input um, to uh, utilize during a um, potentially SWOT analysis, if you want to do that as well. Um, these are all kinds of things that you would be doing uh, in advance to kind of help you get started uh, to think about um you know developing a vision statement you if you if your organization does have a leadership team uh, or a couple of key employees uh, you could certainly engage them in the uh, process um, as i had mentioned mentioned earlier you want to be very conscious of what time frame you're going to use um, one of the other slides you know, spoke to challenging your employees. Uh, so that's uh, that's going to be a interesting aspect. Um, for the most part, I feel most business owners and leaders are fairly reasonable in the sense that it's it's not too much of a uh, unachievable or unreasonable uh, vision. Uh, on the same token, you don't want it to be so soft uh, that the company really isn't moving forward like you want it to. So you have to be realistic um, when you do your vision. If you're a $2 million company today, for example, it's not probably realistic that you're going to be 50 million within two years. So uh, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but uh, just be conscious of being realistic um, and not afraid to stretch uh, too much with your vision. Developing a first draft. Um, clearly, I, I, I don't think I know any uh, business owner that I've worked with that wrote their vision, and uh, that was the final uh, the final one. So it's a should be a work in progress. Should be something that you want to share with your leadership team, uh, or if you're a business owner that's doing it on your own, you may want to share it with uh, someone you're close with, maybe an advisor, maybe a family member, just to you know bounce it off of somebody um, to get your uh, get some feedback, um, and then putting it all together. You're either going to have um, one or, or more formats. You may have a narrative format. You may have, uh, you may take that narrative format and make it a in, infographic for a visual aid. So those are uh, different things that you can uh, clearly think about now that you've got your vision uh, completed. Kind of back to that communicating it. Um, you know, very often I will use the uh, kind of long um, phrase of how will you visually and verbally communicate your value, I'm sorry, your vision internally and externally. Um, and that's an important thing to think about. Um, I don't have it in the slide, but I actually have a little quadrant um, that I share as an exercise. And the quadrant is 
um, internal and external, verbal and visual. You know, what are the kinds of things that you could be doing? It's a great brainstorming exercise, quite frankly, uh, to be brainstorming on how will I uh, communicate this? How will I not let it fall through the cracks? How will I think about this each and every day? How will I uh, get my team to make decisions based on uh, the vision? Um, what kind of visual aids uh, could I use, whether it's, you know, framed on the wall or something a whole lot more creative than that. Uh, and again, that is clearly on the uh, job description of the uh, CEO, president, owner of the company, leader. Uh, that's, you know, fully uh, your responsibility uh, to do that. So, you know, finally, the, uh, you know, execution <clears throat> and measuring, um, you know, just to reiterate that point, that I'll often share that, you know, writing the vision may seem challenging when you're doing it. Um, but as I've mentioned, that always feels to me like the easy part. Uh, the hard part where it's a known, it's a known uh, statistics, most business owners and leaders, um, unfortunately, uh, fail in a very big way uh, of executing it. Um, and I'd say probably one of the reasons they fail to execute it is they don't have any way of measuring uh, where they're going with it. And they don't plan accordingly, you know, whether that's um, monthly, weekly, quarterly meetings to really talk about the vision. Um, maybe during one-on-ones with employees, talk about the vision. Um, maybe, you know, finding your own rhythm of how often you bring up the vision. These are all things that are part of an execution plan. And um, unfortunately, uh, too many leaders um, really are unable to um, achieve their vision uh, because they're not tracking their progress. They have no execution plan. There's no measurement. Um, so I would encourage um, folks that, here that are going to renew, redo, or create a, a vision that you also um, uh, provide equal thought on how you're going to measure it, how you're going to track your progress towards it, how you're going to communicate it. Um, so I hope that was uh, helpful uh, to all of you that are here today. I am going to say thank you for um, your attention today. Uh, I hope you, I hope this has been helpful. And um, I will now uh, turn it over to you, uh, Eugene. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, great presentation and a topic that I too am also very passionate about. Um, I certainly have some questions for those of you um, who are with us. If you have questions, again, please feel free to raise them in the chat. We'll monitor them. Um, certainly one of the things that I heard you talk about is obviously the creation of the vision and then obviously starting to execute on it. But you also mentioned about um, rewriting the vision from, from time to time. And so one of the questions that I was gonna pose is, how do you know when it's time to go back and reevaluate, reconsider, sort of redraft a, an earlier vision statement that you may have had for a company? Maybe you've been in existence for 10 or 20 years and, and at some point you did create a vision statement. What are the sort of indicators that you might look for to identify the right time to reevaluate and and redraft that vision statement for the next future time period in the organization. Well, that's a great that's a great question. Um, I, and, and the first thing that I thought about when you asked that question was, you know, how that relates to annual planning. Um, and you know, in my opinion, if an organization, you know, is doing a vision that's a little bit shorter time frame, like say three to five years. Um, that's going to be a much more uh, tighter time frame where if they truly wanted to, they could just, you know, stick with that vision for three years and just keep tracking it and just stay with it. Uh, however, I do think from year to year, if, uh, if an organization is doing annual planning, that the annual planning process should include uh, a renew or, you know, a, a renew of the vision. Um, and it may be just a minor adjustment, uh, however, a, a more major adjustment in a vision would certainly be if something happened, um, an extraordinary event, uh, an opportunity to buy a competitor, a, uh, a pandemic, um, 
a um, you know a governmental regulation that comes in. So if there's something more likely external that might happen to the organization, or even a big move internally with a with an acquisition or you know something like that, then that would really be a, a great indicator uh, to go back and 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 do much more of a of an overhaul on the vision. However, if it stays kind of like a uh, steady steady go, steady as she goes, then I think the annual um, uh, meeting would be a great time to have that on an agenda to um, uh, review and renew. Um, to that point, I think you had the slide about Jack Welch and, and great leaders create the vision. And so um, I'm wondering if you could speak to sort of the, the conflicts that sometimes might arise between a business owner who has a vision for his or her business and then sort of includes other senior leaders or other team members in crafting that vision. And all of a sudden you get a team that's crafting the vision and ultimately the vision that gets created is not the vision that the business owner has for the organization. So sort of that struggle between, listen, this is my business and I know what I envision for the next three, five years for the business. But if I do start to bring in additional voices into that creation of a vision process, it might steer away from what the business owner truly envisions for the future of the business. I don't know if you've ever encountered that kind of conflicts or how that can be addressed. Well, I, I, I think, again, uh, another great question. And I can see that um, as being a potential conflict. Um, the organization is moving and growing. And now the, uh, obviously from, from, from most of the company's history, it is clearly the business owner's vision. Um, but I think the way I would uh, respond to that or reply to that is if that business owner has been developing this vision, you know, you know, throughout the stage of the business where it's fairly small and closely held, then it should be clear by that point, you know, uh, of where, you know, where uh, that business owner envisions this company going. So by the time, in my opinion, anyway, or my experience, by the time that that business is really developing a leadership team, um, many or, or, or all of them are already on board uh, to the vision that was already established uh, with the business owner. And throughout building a leadership team, you're obviously building, um, you're, you're asking people to join that team that are already in alignment with the vision that you've developed over the last two, five, 10 years. Um, so I, I don't think it's actually going to be that much of a conflict because I think if the business owner quote unquote, does it right, um, while he's developing his leadership team, uh, he's already got them on board and in alignment with the vision that he has. Now, certainly go five, 10 more years out and the company goes from, you know, a million dollars of revenue to $50 million. It's a whole different organization at that point. And, uh, and clearly it does become a little bit less about the business owner, a little bit, um, I think that's I think that's how I would I would respond to that, Eugene. Um, and a natural segue from that, you mentioned about sort of developing leaders within the organization. So one of the things that we are really focused on at Align is helping business owners understand and how to make their managers be better leaders within their organizations. And one of the habits that we've identified is sort of creating a connection between company purpose, company vision and the quarterly priorities, the action items that you're asking teams, departments, and individual employees to, to take and be accountable for. And I was wondering if you could just speak to the importance of making that connection in terms of helping individual employees not only see the big picture of what the vision is, but also how they are contributing to it and a part and a, having a role in the organization achieving that vision? Yeah, that, that, another great question. Uh, and clearly it was, a simple answer would be, well, of course it's very important. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the uh, the thought on that, I, I'm not sure if, uh, if, if you use the term uh, individual plans, but back when I was using the um, uh, six disciplines model of strategic planning, we kind of went through that cascading, right? Of, you know, the, 
the bigger you know the bigger um, uh, goals that are, that are needed to achieve that vision, and then cascading down to you know whether it's a department, uh, and then maybe a team, and then maybe an an, an individual. So I feel that if leadership does a great job of providing a tool, you know, whether it's a line or, you know, uh, some type of uh, visual tool where they, where the, uh, everyone in the organization can see how it starts from the top and goes down to the uh, department uh, or to a specific, specific team uh, and then to an individual and the individual plans are developed as a result of achieving team goals which will then uh, achieve um, departmental goals, which will then achieve uh, government, I'm sorry, uh, overall company goals. So yes, it's important, but you also have to have a plan on how you're communicating that to that individual so that they see the bigger picture and how it drills down to them and how their daily activities, um, daily responsibilities, it's much easier for them to understand uh, you know, how they play a role in achieving those goals. Yep, completely agree. Um, we've got a few minutes left. If anybody has questions, please use the chat. I haven't seen any questions come in, which means that Jim, your presentation was easily understandable and everybody <laughs> got it, which is great. Um, I'll, I'll give everybody a last opportunity. If not, we can certainly cut it a little bit short. Um, I will go ahead and thank everybody for attending today's coach webinar. A huge thank you to Jim for the great presentation. For those of you who might want to reach out with him just on a one-on-one -on -one basis after this presentation, if you're too shy to ask questions during this webinar, you are welcome to uh, go to Jim's um, website. That's Chris Afuli Business Coaching. That's C-R-I-S-A-F-U-L-L-I businesscoaching.com. You can email him at Jim at chrisafulibusinesscoaching.com. Um, obviously, Jim talked a lot about measuring and executing your vision and your strategic plan. Um, we encourage you all to use the Align software for those of you who aren't doing so already to implement that great business habit and make that uh, a regular part of, of your organization. If you need any assistance or information from us, you're always welcome to reach out to us. Simply email us at support at aligntoday.com. Again, thank you to everybody for attending. We hope that you will join us for our next coach webinar. I can tell you that is already going to be on June 8th. So just in a matter of weeks where we'll be having a presentation on manager habits and how to become better leaders and better managers within your organization. Um, but till then, we hope that you have a great day. And thanks, Jim. Really appreciate your time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take Bye -bye. care, everyone. Thank you.